Well, the, the worm has turned. New information coming out about passengers stuck in Spain. Sounds like some of them got scammed. Also, more information about the ninth passenger that missed the NCL dawn. And then there's a cruise line that was getting sued, and now they've settled. They're going to have to pay over $1 million. Plus, we hit a big milestone. Cruise news and my views. Let's talk about it. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to La Lido Loca. I'm your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news and views. For your face, for your face on a Thursday, Thursday, April the 4th, 2024. And let's just swing it back to Spain. Let's go back to Barcelona, where as we left yesterday, the MSC Armonia being forced to stay in Barcelona because there were some people on board that did not have the right paperwork, specifically 69 Bolivian citizens on board did not have the proper paperwork to enter into Barcelona. We have an update. It wasn't that these folks didn't have paperwork. It was that the paperwork that these folks had was fake. They got the fake documentation. The documentation appearing real enough to allow them to board the cruise ship in South America, but not real enough for them to be able to enter in and move about the Schengen countries there in Europe. But wait, there's more. The plot thickens. It's not like these people nefariously on their own generated fake paperwork and some evil plan to get over to Spain. It sounds like they got scammed. And as we looked at it yesterday, the Armonia is still in Barcelona. But update number two, they've removed the 69 passengers from that vessel. They put them in a holding area. They're not allowed to officially enter into Barcelona. And now they've let the Armonia go so that that cruise can continue. MSC working with immigration, working with these folks from Bolivia, trying to figure out what's next for them. Again, it doesn't sound like they've done anything wrong other than, you know, they've maybe trusted somebody for their documentation that they should not have. But um, yeah, it's tricky. It does answer some questions from yesterday. My big one from yesterday was how did they even get on the cruise ship if they didn't have proper documentation? Because cruise lines are normally checking your documentation through your trip. Um, but yeah, it sounds like they got the old uh, they got the old scam. Cruise news story number two, unfortunate story coming out of Australia, unfortunate story coming from Royal Caribbean, unfortunate story coming out about Royal Caribbean's brilliance of the seas. This is the beleaguered cruise ship that had to shorten its cruise because of propulsion issues. It had to cancel a cruise because of propulsion issues. And now it is delaying a cruise because of propulsion issues. This all started back on March the 22nd when it was on, I believe, an 11-day cruise, had propulsion issues, cut that cruise short, canceled the March the 30th cruise and said, hey, we're going to have it fixed and ready to go by April the 4th. Well, April the 4th, that is today, guests were notified, I think maybe just yesterday, very short notice that their April the 4th cruise would not be starting on April the 4th, but instead it would be starting on April the 8th which without even being Pythagoras or anybody good at math, you can figure out that that's less days, less days. So they're shortening this cruise that was supposed to start on April the 4th. Fortunately, they're rolling out the red carpet when it comes to compensation, giving some money back, some future cruise credit, some pain and suffering money. And I don't know about pain and suffering, but you know, it's all packed in there. So I'll leave that for people that are uh, affected to go figure out. But uh, yeah, that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. The machines, they break down. It's hard to get them fixed. There's some challenges with getting a scheduled port time, all, the, all that kind of stuff going on, and that's resulting in some people's cruises being shorted. Uh, anybody down there in Australia trying to get on that cruise ship, have you been Have you been delayed? Leave a comment below. Cruise news story number three, and I'm hesitant to talk about it because it's divisive and it's dramatic. Why would I be hesitant to talk? I like the divisive and the dramatic. Guess what? Guess what's happening? Carnival Cruise Line is increasing the price of their bottled water again. This is the third time they're increasing their water price in the last 17 months. It's 202% uh, more expensive than it was 
Just a short 17 months ago, you could get a 12 pack, a 16.9 ounce bottle of water for $4 and 90 something cents, just right under $5. And well now it's gonna be $14 and 90 something cents, just under $15. So that's gonna cost you $10 more than it would 17 months ago. But hey, look, it's inflation, everything costs. I'm trying to just go ahead and preemptively run through all of the comments. Hey, it's inflation, everything costs more. If you don't like it, don't go, don't buy the water. You don't need water, quit complaining. First world problems, what, what are the other ones? I, I don't know, but look, um, I don't like it. I don't like it when the prices go up and I think it's okay to say that we don't like it. And I guess it's okay to say, shut up. So, you know, everybody's entitled to say whatever they want to say, but uh, yeah. Uh, here's another one of those examples of where now, uh, you know, the cruise lines can make some more money to pay down their debt. It's a business. <sighs> I don't know, man. Again, it's what the consumer will tolerate. Will you buy water for $15 for a 12 pack? It's really not that expensive comparatively, but it's just, uh, you know, it used to be a nice thing. I guess the thing that irks me is when I first started cruising, you know, there was a big move to not allow people to bring plastic water bottles on board because, you know, that was a vector for where people would sneak clear liquor on board. And I just remember the messaging around it. Look, we're gonna make it easy for you to get water. We're gonna make it so dang cheap that you know, you're gonna be happy to get water on board. You know, four bucks for a 12 pack. You can't beat that. It's, you can't get it that cheap at the Walmart. But um, yeah, I guess those days are gone. Not only can you not sneak the clear liquor on board, but your water ain't gonna be that cheap either. And look, it's still, Carnival's water price, still one of the cheapest in the biz. But I, I thought it was kind of a selling point. I'm sure if you already prepaid it, it, they're gonna honor that price. But going forward, if you want the water, gonna cost you three Lincolns, three Abe Lincolns, those are $5 bills, Lincoln on the five. I spent four hours last night watching the new series on Apple TV Plus, Manhunt, and that was based on the book called Manhunt, and it's all about the 12 days after the Abraham Lincoln assassination, Stanton, the Secretary of War, trying to hunt down John Wilkes Booth as he made his way down, or wherever he ended up. I don't know. I haven't got to the conclusion yet. I think I know how the story ends for Booth, but but it's muddy in my, in my head. He did spend some time with Dr. Mudd. Um, if you love history and you like the Abe Lincoln, it, it gives me me the goose chills. I've been to Ford's Theater. I've been to the house across the street where he passed away. Um, there's some heavy things right there. Washington, a great place to go for that kind of feeling, but a good series. Anybody watching it, uh, leave a comment below. Cruise news story number four, an interesting settlement has been made by Royal Caribbean International, a settlement that is resulting in them paying $1.3 million in refunds over a canceled Capital Jazz Cruise. Capital Jazz Cruise was set to sail like three years ago in 2021, but it got canceled because of the shutdown. Then it was supposed to sail again on January the 14th, 2022, but then we got the Omicron variant and it shut it down again. Somewhere along the way, Royal Caribbean helped with the ticket part, the theme part of the cruise. They helped sell tickets for that. And that kind of put them in a relationship, at least a you know legal relationship when it came to the price of the tickets. And so when people didn't get their money back for the tickets, they sued. And just recently, Royal Caribbean, without admitting any guilt, has settled and has agreed to refund these tickets to the tune of $1.3 million. The reason I find this story noteworthy is typically when it's a theme cruise, there's a company that handles the theme part of it, the ticketing for the theme. They'll probably collect your money for your cruise cabin, but then they'll also collect more money to cover the cost of the theme cruise. Sometimes that's rolled into one price, but it is two buckets when it comes to the revenue, cabin revenue, theme cruise revenue, events revenue. And so it's wild that Royal Caribbean kind of got tied up in the theme ticket part of it, not just the cabin part of it, uh, from what I can gather. I, I don't remember this cruise specifically, but like I said, either way, they're gonna shell out 1.3 million to uh, get people paid. I know I've said it before, I have yet to go on a theme cruise, but I will be going on a theme cruise. I'm going on the Comic-Con cruise next year. And that's a wild process. Like I booked it on a website through a company hosting the con. And then on the back end, you know, they're doing the booking. 
Uh, it's a good reminder. I need to check and make sure I've got my booking number because I'm sending money off to them every month. Uh, we talked about that story where people got to the cruise port and they thought they had a cruise on a theme cruise, but they did not have a cruise because it got canceled. Uh, good reminder to maybe check on my own stuff. Now, we talked a lot about the eight that were late for the NCL Dawn and their adventures, but there was a ninth passenger that also was disembarked from the cruise ship that day because of medical issues, and her family has been pretty vocal lately, saying that they felt that she was abandoned in that process. I'm going to tell you all about that, but before I do, I'd like to quickly invite you to subscribe. If you like staying up to date with everything going on in Karoo, Using, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of the episodes. Well, dun, 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 dun. man, we hit the big milestone, 250,000 subscribers. It blows my mind, really. We're coming up on the seven-year anniversary for the first time I uploaded a cruise video and I could not have imagined seven years ago that this is where we would be. And so a big heartfelt thank you from Jenny B and myself to anybody who has ever hit that subscribe button, anybody who's ever hit a like button, anybody who has ever commented. Um, we're sure excited to be here and do this. And a big thank you. I'm just going to say this. Between now and this time next Thursday, one week, it would be a great time to leave a comment on a video. If you've never left a comment on a video, this would be a good one. And, you know, uh, we'll, we'll talk about what that means a week from now, but that, that's all I'm going to say. And also, look, uh, I appreciate that the news has been a little heavy today. And so we'll, we'll go light. We'll go light for a couple minutes. I've been asked a few questions about all the stuff that's in the background. So I did a little shelf tour and let me roll that. And then we'll talk about the NCL lady. Uh, yeah. Here you go, shelf tour. All right, since all the news is kind of heavy today and I've had a few requests, let's go over what's on the shelves. Um, th this part you don't see, there was a time where I included the newsletters uh, in the shot, but uh, this red lobster hat was from our friend Liz when we used to do Mail Mondays. Of course, that's a picture of me and my friend Johnny Stylish. And ironically, it's framed with an Ital animal. If you know the joke, you know the joke. Old Blue, this is my first cruising hat, uh, a classic. I love that hat, but I don't really wear it anymore. It really was always too small for my head. Uh, this fish here is like from TJ. It's just decor. Uh, the letters came from Hobby Lobby. It's like decor from TJ Maxx. Nothing sentimental other than set dressing. Of course, I do love the peace sign. Uh, Funko Pop of Guy Fieri, a cruising connection there. Carnival style. Uh, the This actually came from Sydney, Australia, so that's an actual souvenir. Again, we've got uh, some more decor. I think I got those at Hobby Lobby. I just recently got this Kiss uh, painting. It's actually a collage, a paper collage from an artist on the beach in Clearwater. Got a ship on a stick back there. We got uh, the 1,000 subscriber play button. And uh, just uh, this is a light from the dollar store, battery operated. Uh, this is a recent Lego set that I got, the Lighthouse. It actually has a power function to it, which is kind of cool. This is a really nice set. Uh, looks great. Home decor octopus. You got a home decor seahorse. Home decor pot. Again, a lot of this stuff, a couple years ago, I bought it just to dress the set. So I think I was at a Home Goods or a TJ Maxx. So another retired Lego set here. The Globe. That was a, that was a fun build. I've got a light up D&D D20. Uh, kind of a throwback to our Cruise Wars memories. Over here, this is just home decor. Uh, our friend John from the Ship Show, when he first started uh, doing... His channel, they did a, an award show, and I got a, a cruisy award. Globe from Home Decor. A couple more ships on the stick. Official Lego set for MSC. Our friend Ian, probably one of our first international viewers. Ian from Sydney, Australia, early on, sent us this koala stuffed plush animal from Sydney. Uh, the sloth is a uh, Home Decor. Maravilla, I got that on the gift shop. Another retired Lego set, Ship in the Bottle. Spider-Man, my favorite 
Marvel character. This is a bank. Saving up my cruise money. And then uh, this was the first cruise ship I went on, the Fantasy. I didn't pick up that ship model on the Fantasy, but that's kind of a sweet sentimental gift. Jenny B got that for me. I think it was just last year. The whale tail came from a shop in Juneau in Alaska. And that was the first ship on a stick I ever got on my first cruise, Carnival Fantasy. Picked up this pretzel at FAO Swartz when I was knocking around with Doug from Cruise Radio. Uh, Pac-Man Ghost I got on clearance at Target, and uh, I love having that in the shot. I believe that this was gifted to us. I'm not sure from where, but a nice little nautical candle. Just got this R2-D2 to dress up the set a little bit, something cheap. I think I got that at five below. And then these pillows were sent to us somewhere along the way. Nice custom pillows, but that's the set for now. You know, it's uh, constantly evolving. But uh, yeah, for those that wanted to see it, there you go. Okay, this is Julie Linkoff, 80-year-old cruiser on the NCL Dawn. She got off of the cruise ship at Sao Tome and Principe, the small island off the west coast of Africa where the eight people were late back for the NCL Dawn. We know that she got off the ship on the same day. She went on a tour and during that tour, she collapsed. She woke up, she was experiencing numbness and weakness, and she eventually ended up in a hospital on that island. Now her son-in-law and her daughter had been tracking her with an air tag, and when they noticed that the NCL Dawn had left the area, but the air tag was still on the island, they became concerned and they started trying to reach out and figure out where she was at. They said they called 15 times and could not raise her. And they said that they were never notified by Norwegian Cruise Line that she had been disembarked from the vessel. Now for Norwegian Cruise Line's part, they're saying that they did try to reach Julie on the island, but they were unable to reach her. Also, when Norwegian was asked about how they communicate to people in this situation, they did release a statement and their statement said this, that their policy, and this is a quote, is to contact the guests directly as we would not have the authority to share any medical details with anyone else without their expressed consent. So essentially they're saying they communicate with the guest and if the guest gives consent, then they can communicate with other people. That's me reading into it. Um, but it's weird. Like I just checked in for my cruise that's leaving on Sunday and I put in an emergency contact. This is Carnival Cruise Line that I'm going on. I assume that if something happens to me, that is consent that they can talk to Jenny, that they can talk to my emergency contact. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if you need to, you know, I don't, I don't know how you would clear that up in advance. Like cruise lines, if something happens to me, you have my consent to talk about my medical condition with my emergency contact. I feel like that's why I put it there. But anyways, this lady was in bad shape. There is a nice part of the story where she hooked up with the eight Campbells from the eight, the eight people that missed the ship they connected with Julie there on the island and they were able to contact her family and let them know what was going on with her, which began a process for them getting her out of uh, Sao Tome and getting her back to California. And it's a good thing that they got her out of there. Apparently she has suffered a stroke, possibly a heart attack, maybe a second minor stroke, but at least now she is in the care of her physicians in California. Her family is there and we certainly hope that she has a full recovery. It's an interesting story. Again, I've already highlighted it. What does that mean when you have an emergency contact if cruise lines can't talk to them? I don't know if that's true all the way across the board. And then uh, there was an interesting angle that was brought up by Jay from The Ship Life, maybe suggesting that at 80 years old, you shouldn't be out traveling by yourself. I know Jay and he's a very nice and sincere guy. I don't think he was trying to cast shade or dispersion on anybody that's older, but it's an interesting question. Should there be age restriction for cruisers? Once you get to 70, no more solo cruises, no more going to port by yourself. No more eating at the dining room after 5.30 p.m. Look, I'm kidding around a little bit here. I believe that you know people should be able to do whatever they want to do. I mean, for goodness sakes, it's not like we let 70 and 80-year-olds run the country. I, I don't know. Look, I don't think it's an age thing, right? Age is only a number. It's how you feel, that kind of thing. But 
Uh, it does, you know, this is a serious situation. And fortunately, hopefully it, it's going to turn out well for, you know, Julie. Hopefully she recovers well. But uh, yeah, is, is the age even part of this conversation? What do you guys think about this communication in the event of an emergency? Um, a lot to unwrap there. I would love to hear your comments. Boom, that is your cruise news. Thanks so much for checking out the show today. It's Tony for La Lido Loca. And until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye. Cruise news. Cruise news. Cruise.